to start taking the head off the motor. So you're going to well in this in this scenario, it's a 12 or sorry, it's a 11 mil uh, uh, bolt. So we're going to start taking them apart. You don't want to go too hard on them right away, just in case you do snap them off. If they're seized in. Best to start everything by hand. <clears throat> now when you put this all back together, there will be a torque sequence. Uh, make sure you look up your torque sequence so you're not warping your head. There's actually a removal procedure too, but I don't think we'll be doing any damage by doing what we're doing right now. So. Once I get this head all off, I'll uh, we'll show you what uh, the inside of the motor looks like. Out. We're going to remove the head, see what the pistons and the dome of the head looks like. So uh, I've already got this head off, so I'm just going to show you how to do it. It was stuck on there pretty good, so you give it a couple hits on the sides. Uh, Use a rubber hammer because this is aluminum. Aluminum can crack on, with a steel hammer, but you're gonna have some of them are stuck on pretty good, so you're gonna have to use a little bit of grunt, bang on it some, get it to move, and it'll come off. It's just uh, there's no dowels or anything inside. It's just a flat surface where your bolts drop down through. You have a gasket here um, that seals everything in. So, but as of right now, I have one cylinder that looks pretty clean, the other one that looks a little bit dirty. Uh, it doesn't look like the domes of the piston are in rough shape. Like it doesn't look like there's any pitting in it or anything like that. So my assumption was that uh, the bottom end let go in this motor in the beginning, but we wanted to pull the top off just to make sure it wasn't something here. So. Our next step is probably going to be like tear down, pull the engine right out so we can see if it was at the crank or not because this motor won't turn over whatsoever. Alright, so we got our motor out onto the workbench. Uh, we're going to pull the, the buckets off and uh, see what's going on down in underneath and possibly pull this off later on uh, to see uh, if we have to get into that far. But you have four bolts here, four bolts there. So we'll, we'll take those out and then the buckets will come off and you can buckets and sleeves. We'll see what's going on on the inside. So you always want to start them by hand. You never really want to zap them with an impact gun because they could break if they're seized in a little but you also want to give like little snaps of the snaps of the ratchet to uh, get them started it allows the bolt to twist and then the bottom half to catch back up they will uh, they do flex some now after everything's loose we'll use our drill Get them out. Now this uh, little impact driver is not overly strong, but I find it works really good for things like that. If you guys are interested in one of those, they're uh, a Rockwell little impact driver works pretty good I like it so nothing seized on my pistons so everything's moving nice there give it a little tap and it'll break the seal down at the bottom so you can lift everything up and out I left the exhaust ports on or the manifold on so we'll set that there and wrist pin on this cylinder is still moving 
I'm not so sure about the other one. It does move back so and forth. We're going to take our pistons off, off the connecting rod. And on the side here where your wrist pin is, there's a little C-clip in here. So there's a little channel. You can push on that and it'll pop out. Just make sure you, uh, you're ready to catch it because it can go flying. You don't want to lose them. And then when you got your pistons off, if you want to reuse your piston, make sure you put it with the same jug. So you're not making new uh, wear patterns. So if you're going to reuse this piston, take this piston, put it with that jug. Take this piston, put it with that jug. Put it with the, the, pit, like the jugs that it come out of. <clears throat> and then once that's out of the way, we're going to get rid of, uh, move the clutch. We will probably take this, can that section come off? Uh, I don't know, but we might take the internals out here so we can see from this side and that side. And then we might also, in the end, need to pull this off just to inspect to make sure there was no damage and go from there. But as of right now, this here will slowly turn. Oh. Just come free a little bit, a little bit freer now. Oh, something happened. Something's binding, so we got to pull her apart and keep going at it. We got the first piston off. There's a little C clip on both sides, so you can you can do it from this side or that side. Now there was a little bit of a ridge. You can we were able to slide this here back and forth by hand in the beginning. But then as it come over, it started to jam up a little bit. So we had to get a little punch and lightly tap on it to slide it further over. So then we can disconnect it from here. Now you have some roller bearings, some little needle bearings that just sits in here on your connecting rod. Then that goes in there like that. Then this pin slides through here and then locks on both sides. So you do that for the first one, you do the same thing for the second one. That way when you're working on the motor, pistons aren't going around, you're not banging up the sides, you're not banging up the surface, and you're saving from needing to buy pistons. Just be careful where you put them so they don't fall off the bench, land on the ground. If you're having it. issues having, uh, taking off your clutch doing, using uh, the water trick, uh, chances are you might have the wrong bolt. And to... Uh, Get the proper bolt. You can't use the clutch bolt that looks like this. It won't work because there's no threads up on this end to pull on the clutch to create hydraulic uh, pressure down in the bottom. So we got our clutch off. I just made another video there about uh, doing the water trick with the, the wrong style bolt which didn't work so if you want to see my water water trick video and the situation that I had I'm trying to remove my clutch uh, I'll try and throw the link in the description and uh, you'll be able to see the issue that I was having trying to pull my clutch off now I got everything all taken apart I got my stator off on this side we had to use a puller here and beat on uh, the puller itself to jolt the stator itself to pull that off and the, the ring and everything else and then we pulled all that apart we uh, got our clutch off now see if I can flip this up so you guys can see it well no well I can kind of show you here there's a bolt, I believe it was from this side that I was having the issue, but we'll say it's from here. Uh, there was a bolt here, and it is an Allen head. So, uh, I believe it was 6 mil was too big, 5 mil was too small, uh, there was 730 seconds or something... Oh, what is it here? Yeah, so there was three... Three sixteenths was too small. And... Seven thirty seconds was too big. So, I had to... Hammer in a Torx bit. 
I think it was a five or six mil Torx. I had to hammer it into the end. As you can see, she's kind of buggered up. I'll have to get a new bolt. It was a steel bolt and aluminum casing. Bolt ended up rusting, causing a bunch of corrosion on the inside. I had to heat here to try and loosen up the rust with a propane torch. Just a little torch. You don't want nothing too hot when you're heating aluminum. You just want it to warm up. But uh, I had to beat and smash a Torx bed into there. And then finally, I was able to crack it free. The other side here wasn't as bad. I was able to get that off uh, with a couple good snaps of the ratchet. Um, this one here, everything just kept on slipping. So I ended up smashing a, beating a Torx bit into it and then hitting it with an impact hoping for things not to break and it managed to crack it loose and spin it out so as I was predicting we got everything all taken apart here we got our uh, air uh, rotary valve off now pull this case now, what happened was, is that down here, if we look, it's missing bearings. The bearings are missing. There's a couple more down here. They just rolled around or something and misaligned themselves, but the bearings are gone. So that bearing let go. We had, I don't know if I can pull this out with one hand. Come on. Okay, we got our crank out onto the bench there now. So the bearing there had let go. This bearing here is rough. This bearing here is rough. This one here is rough as well and it's starting to bind. Everything down on this end, these bearings are all rough. So every bearing in the bottom end let go just being old moisture uh, I don't um, fog my motor I normally start them start my snowmobile about three to four times a year just to let uh, gas and oil run through make sure there's not too much moisture that builds up my snowmobile sits in a garage uh, out of the sun so it doesn't collect a bunch of moisture and stuff like that so that all being said i think the bearings have just failed over the years it's being it being in 1998 and we're yeah. 2018 20 years old uh time will play a toll on equipment but uh we'll look down here as you can see i believe the pin for the crank, I think that was it there. Yeah, the pin for the crank started to walk out of the crank itself to hold everything together here. Well, that side looks uh, pretty flush, so I'm not 100% sure there, but this section seems like it started to move this way and separate in here. As you can see, there is quite a bit of side-to-side -side play in the crank versus over here. Like there's a little bit here, which is kind of normal. You might want it a little bit tighter, but that's fairly normal. This one here, there is quite the gap. So the crank started to come apart. So I won't know if the crank is 100% good until I get the bearings off the bearings and everything taken apart and then I can measure but you can see there's some scoring here which I'm not a fan of it was rubbing on the inside of the case over on this side here so everything's gonna have to be cleaned up real nice and good there was scoring down there uh, not so much scoring on that one 
Uh, there was a little bit of scoring up here. Nothing too crazy. As long as every, if everything goes back together properly, uh, there shouldn't be another issue. But I'm going to take this to uh, somebody who knows more about the cranks and the bottom ends than I do and go from there. But yeah, that's how you uh, pull apart a Formula 583. I'm going to have to start pricing out uh, all my bearings for the bottom end seal kit i'll need the uh, new crank seals i'll need to find the uh how to put my rotary valve back in and how it, it's timed um i'll replace my connecting rod bearings uh the piston bear bearings on the piston at the end of the connecting rod I'll, I'm going to do a complete rebuild of this motor. So if you uh, like those tech tips and want to keep up to date with different things that I'm doing, uh, like, share, subscribe, smash that follow button, and uh, we'll see you next time.